Hey guys, I'm here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another tutorial for the Horus Heresy. This time I'm adding a Praetor to my Sons of Horus force. Um, so far I've done a lot of videos on the Sons of Horus. I've done uh, one single basic infantry, speed painting, 10 uh, infantry, a tank, and now I thought it was time to move on to a character. So I have the Forge World Terminator Cataphracti Praetor miniature. Uh, they're uh, picture of it on their website has it done in the first legion so in abaddon's um, company so in the black and gold armor i'm not a huge fan of that and after doing some research and asking around um, it turns out that there are terminators in other companies of the sons of horus so my praetor is going to be done in that beautiful uh, aqua green color so this is basically like my other um, videos for my Sons of Horrors, except I'm going to push the envelope a little bit, add a couple of extra steps to make the character pop just a little bit more than the infantry. So stick around and enjoy the video. This is the Praetor model I was speaking about. It's an absolutely gorgeous sculpt um, and I just couldn't see it in the black and gold scheme in my head. It just wasn't sitting right. So that's why I decided to go for the normal Sons of Horrors aqua greeny kind of color. In my head, my Sons of Horus are a loyalist. Um, I like to think of them as kind of before Horus turned, or maybe they're a band of Sons of Horus who didn't turn traitor with Horus, hence they wouldn't have Abaddon's color in the force or anything like that. So we're gonna start off like we did with all my other Sons of Horus schemes, which is uh, a Pterodon turquoise contrast over the top. You just wanna make sure that you get a full coat of this all over the armor panels. And remember that this particular sculpt, or like all Praetor sculpts, there is a lot of trim on it. It's going to be painted gold later on. So just pay attention to that a little bit whilst you're applying your uh, quick uh, base coat. I definitely think this sculpt um, suited the uh, blue scheme more. Uh, you will see at the end of the video, and hopefully you guys can let me know in the comments below. If you agree and think that it suited the blue color scheme more or the green color scheme more or the kind of abaddon -y black and next we're going to go on to blood angels red contrast and do all of his uh little tassely bits cataphracty army are mad for their leather tassely straps and um, so he's got some going down like a loincloth and then they're going around the side of his shoulder panels and i also took the time to do the entire cloak in the, uh, the glorious rich red. There's also a bunch of Sons of Horus kind of symbols in the center of both knee pads, in his like belt buckle area and across the shoulder pad, which we uh, use the same red on just to make all those bits and pieces pop. And as you can see, it breaks up all the blue really nicely. Next, it's time for all of that trim. So I'm gonna start with the base of Rich Beer Armor Gold and uh, this is one of those things, I know I say this a lot in videos where it's like, take your time. Uh, take your time, pull up a reference image from kind of Google Images or the Forge website itself, a 360 if you can, um, and make sure you check for all of the gold trim because there is so much of it on this miniature. I actually believe I missed a whole section. He's got a, a symbol and I think on his right fan brace, kind of like where his, a watch would be. Um, and I think that was supposed to be in gold trim as well, um, but I totally missed it. So if you do take your time and make sure you don't miss anything, it will save you a heap of time later on. If you get later down the rabbit hole of painting this miniature and realize you've forgotten some trim, it'll be a nightmare to go back through all the different layers to make it match in. Um, but when you have all of the gold trim on this miniature blocked in, hopefully it'll look something like this. You can see those symbols on his wrist now that I think should have been gold. Didn't really take anything away from my paint scheme. But if I went back and painted them again, I might have uh, spent a little bit more time and got those bits as well. I used Gord Grunta Fur Contrast to block in the uh, big fur pelt over his back uh, and the skulls that are there as well. He's got uh, a skull on one of his belts as well around the front. That also got a quick coat of Gord Grunta Fur. Gord Grunta Fur is one of those magic contrasts that if you don't really know what to uh, paint uh, something natural, fur, beards, cloaks, belts, just give it a coat of fur as your base coat and then you can worry about it later on. Black Templar contrast was used to block in the weapon so both his mace and his uh, combi bolter um, got a coat of um, Black Templar contrast. Quick and easy but uh, it saves an absolute heap of time 
as opposed to going in, painting the casing black and then doing the bit still. It's just contrast just makes base coating so much faster. We're going to use iron hand steel and this is just going to layer up or base coat all of the metallic parts on the bolt gun. So the barrel, uh, his big drum magazine, the, the shoulder stock part, a few parts on the front and then all of the blades on the mace. Um, and then there's like a silver ring bit on the mace as well, which also got a coat of silver. This is a quick and easy step. And from here, all of the base coats are on the miniature. It's already starting to look quite nice. And it's now time to uh, wash the miniature down. So like my other Sons of Horror scheme, I'm now going to move over to Nuln Oil. And all you're trying to do here is get a nice even coat across every single part of the miniature. Gold, blue armor, red, everything is just going to cut a coat of null oil this will pull all the tones together make them all match a little bit more and give us a really nice kind of base point and um, to start layering up the miniature when it's all dry okay guys while we wait for the shade to dry we're going to get the miniature based up as we always do that means when we go on to the layering stage later on we're working towards finishing off the miniature we don't have to finish it and then wait around to do all the basing stuff um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you guys for the continued support on the channel, Media Hobbies, and the 365 Project. Thank you guys so much. Um, we recently passed our 15,000 subscriber milestone, and we're actually just about to cross over 16,000, so things are going in the right direction. Um, if you guys are watching this video and you are not already subscribed to my channel, um, it would mean a lot if it took two seconds out of your day to hit that subscribe button and help the channel grow. I'm trying to make this my full-time job as I'm doing now. Um, and all of these subscribers um, make a huge difference. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you uh, do the normal things, drop a like, ask me any questions you have below in the comments and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. But other than that, let's get back to the video. And like I said before, while I wait for shades to dry, I tend to get the miniature based. This means that from this point on, when I'm painting, I'm painting towards completing the model outright. There's nothing more annoying to me than finishing a paint job on a miniature Kind of, kind of taking a step back and enjoying it and having a look at the paint job and then remembering that I have to now spend half an hour, 40 minutes basing the miniature up, which is kind of annoying. I then move over to Sons of Horrors Green and this is where we are going to layer up all of that beautiful uh, teal armor. And this is a step, you've, once again, you're going to want to take your time on. This is a standout feature of the miniature is the, uh, the armor. And it doesn't matter what Sons of Horus Praetor you are painting up, they are all going to have all of these stages, all of these different armor panels. And one thing above all else is going to scream out at the people looking at the miniature, and that is the, the classic green armor. So take your time and try and get a nice smooth coat. I told you in this video I was going to do a little bit more detail than a standard uh, marine. This would have gone into uh, highlighting up the armor even more, like edge highlight and that kind of thing. The problem with doing that was is that 90% of armor panels on this miniature ended with some form of gold trim. So I would have no idea as to where to put any of these edge highlights. Um, and I thought it finished off quite nicely. So I was happy enough to leave the armor there. Next, it's time to layer up all of the beautiful red parts. And for that, it's just gonna be and um, one or two neat coats of Mephiston Red. You very much want just a nice neat layer job with the Mephiston Red. You want to leave that dark, rich red contrast washed with black in all of the recesses in between all of the little tassels. And you just want to get the most raised areas done with the Mephiston Red um, layering. I took my time with the tassels, making sure I didn't accidentally connect any two. And also all the ones wrapped around his uh, shoulder pads as well. When it came to the cloak, this is the one where you would use uh, more than one coat to get a nice smooth finish um, on the cape. Obviously it is a big key feature of this particular miniature, anything with a cape. If you want to make the model stand out and look really nice, you're going to want to spend a bit of extra time on that cape. And luckily for me, uh, the cape is um, kind of flowing quite nicely. So there's lots of nice folds, which to me makes painting a cape a lot easier because I know where all these bright highlights are going to be and where all the shadow is going to stay on a miniature. If a cape is flowing majestically behind somebody and it's a big flat piece, it's, it's an absolute nightmare in my humble opinion. 
um, better painters than me will be able to just decide where shadows go. I was never, that was never my strength. So I just left all of the dark recesses dark and any of the bits that were raised, I went in and uh, layered them up, making the cape pop. And with all of the red layered up, the model is really starting to come to life. We jump to Liberator Gold Layer Paint, and this is going to be the first two highlights on all of the gold. I know I've said this now about the green and the red armor, but there's so much gold in this that it is another kind of key point. It's another bit that if you don't spend the time on it, um, it will stand out. So this particular Liberator Gold went on most of the raised surfaces. Once again, leaving the uh, base coated and shaded Retributor Armor Gold in all the deepest shadows. From here, we jumped over to uh, Ironbreaker and we used this as our, our final highlight on the gold. Just a quick uh, kind of spot highlight on all of the very highest raised points. We also use this to layer up all of the weapons. All the other parts in this miniature are pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into how to paint eye lenses once again. Um, all I did was a simple coat of the Ironbreaker Silver into the eye lenses and then right red contrast fed into them. I gave the pelt across his shoulder a quick dry brush of bone and I painted the back banner exactly the same as I painted the miniature as I was going along. Gold bits are all painted the same as all the other gold bits um, and the red is painted exactly the same as the, co the uh, cloak and uh, all of his tassily parts and with that that was painting up the sons of horus praetor to match in with my growing sons of horus force i hope you guys learned a little bit of something here today about how to paint a sons of horus character i'm super pleased with the final result of this model if you are too um, and you're not already think about hitting that subscribe button and joining the meteor hobbies family um, drop a comment if you have any questions, make sure you like the video, and if you want to support me uh, and see the channel grow even further, there are links to things like my Patreon below. Thank you guys so much for sticking around till the end of this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one.